Hey everyone, it's Smite Pants Chess. I hope you're doing well. Today we're going to look at a game between Stockfish A and Alpha Zero, played in London 2018. And we're going to look at it from Alpha Zero's perspective, who's playing black in this game. And we actually get into a Berlin endgame. Um, and basically we're going to see what Alpha Zero plays. They actually play a really interesting move on move 9, and which is actually quite rare in the database. So Stockfish opened with E4. Alpha zero played e5, and we get into a Berlin with knight to f3, knight c6, bishop b5, and then knight to f6 from alpha zero. White castles, of course, and then knight takes e4, and Stockfish plays it with d4, knight d6, bishop takes c6, pawn takes, pawn takes e5, knight to f5, and after queen takes and king takes, we're into the Berlin endgame. Now there are many moves that white can play, but uh, Stockfish here just played knight c3, which is the most common. And this is where I want to sort of pause and just take a bit of reflection. So the common moves here are actually to play, let's, black usually plays bishop e6. They can play king to e8 as well. Bishop d7, bot h6, or knight to e7. These are the most common moves. So knight to e7 is actually probably one of the rare ones where black's going to reroute the knight to g6. However, interestingly enough, Alpha Zero plays the sixth rarest move, um, and they actually plays this in most games when they've played the Berlin. And I'm going to start recommending to play this as well to everyone at home who's watching this game, and I'm probably going to start trying to learn this opening myself and playing it this way. Alpha Zero plays the move Bishop E7. Okay, and I'll put loads of arrows on here, but it's actually quite simple. Basically, Black's plan is to play Knight to H4 and try and trade that knight off on f3 for white and then black's plan is simple play moves like bishop e6 h5 king e8 and rook a to d8 and that's usually black's setup so in this game knight to e4 was played by stockfish and alpha zero gets on with their plan of playing knight to h4 trying to trade this knight off on f3 first though stockfish checks and the king moves to e8 and now typically if maybe white takes this knight off, um, knight takes knight, let's say bishop takes, and I think again black's got no problems whatsoever out of the opening. In fact they've got the two bishops and a very solid structure, um, and this is perfectly playable for both sides to be honest. But going back to the game, Stockfish decided to play knight to d4 to avoid the trade of knights. And here black can play knight to f5 if they wish, and typically play continues knight to e2 and h5. And having a look at this with my Stockfish 10, Bishop G5 was suggested. Uh, but after takes, takes F6, takes, takes, Knight to E4, King F7, Rook D2 and B6. White can double Rooks, but then Black just plays H4. And again, this is considered an equal position. And again, Black's got no problems. Okay, the pawns are a bit messed up on this side of the board, but it's, um, they've got a very solid structure. They could play moves like Bishop A6, Bishop B7, maybe C5, or Bishop B6 if he if they want to. Uh, Black's got no issues in this game, to be honest, and it's considered dead equal. So back to the game after knight to d4, alpha zero played knight to g6, attacking the pawn on e5, and knight g3 was played. Um, knight takes e5 could be played, but then comes rook e1, and Black's got to be a bit careful. Black can keep hold of the pawn if they wish with knight to g6, but then comes knight to f5, and if bishop takes f5, knight takes f5, king f8, takes on e7, takes on e7. White can always play bishop f4, and after knight d5, play bishop g3. With white probably going to play c4, and pick up um, the c7 pawn anyway. So if we go back to this rookie one move, f6 is also playable. However, again, white just plays knight to f5, takes, takes, and now they're attacking g7. And also preparing to play f4. If king f7 here, knight takes e7 just wins, because then king takes an f4, pinning the knight. So to get out of the conundrum, black has to play bishop c5 to pin the f2 pawn. And after knight takes g7, king f7, knight to f5. Again, both sides have got equal play. It's considered dead equal by stockfish 10. Again, black's pawn structure is a bit messed up on the king's side, but their pieces are a lot more developed. And I imagine black will continue with maybe h5, could play rook d8 or rook to g8, maybe attack the king, but it's... Uh, would become an interesting game, perfectly playable again for both sides. So Alpha Zero didn't want to play Knight takes e5 here though, he didn't want to risk it, and just played h5 instead. Getting on with the plan of playing h4 and really suffocating White's position. And also trying to get this rook out on the h-file with rook h5. 
knight d to f5 was played, attacking the g7 pawn. If uh, black decides to take this off with bishop takes, knight takes, and bishop f8, then I think white can just play h4 now, and uh, just prob probably follow it with g3. And this really scuppers black's plan. So in the game, alpha zero first played bishop f8. I think the point is if white plays h4 here, and again tries to scupper black's plan, uh, they're a bit tied up, because the bishop still attacks this knight on f5, and this knight on g3 protects this knight. However, there's also a knight on g6 attacking this pawn. So basically, this knight's protecting this knight, this knight's protecting this pawn, and white can never play g3, so they can't really move and sort of support this h4 pawn. So maybe you have to move like bishop e7 at some point. Um, it's really going to be hard to play for white. But in the game after bishop f8, Stockfish 8 played bishop g5. Threatened to mate on d8. So alpha zero is forced to take on f5 now. Bishop takes, knight takes f5. And now they can play knight takes e5. Because if white plays rook e1 here, black has f6, protecting the knight and attacking the bishop on g5. If bishop f4, this king f7, takes on e5. Pawn takes, rook takes, and rook d8. And again, black's got a perfectly playable position. Probably going to play moves like rook d2. And okay, white's got the pawn majority on the king's side, but again, black's got enough compensation and even has the bishop in the endgame, which is often considered better. But after knight takes e5, bishop f4 from stockfish, f6 to support the knight, bishop takes knight, pawn takes bishop, and then rook to d3. So white's preparing maybe to double rooks, or just maybe move their other rook onto the e-file. King f7 was played by alpha 0. Rook e1 hits the pawn. Alpha 0 protects the pawn. And now there's rook f3. So have ideas of a discovered attack against the king. So the king moves to e6, going for a walk. And Stockfish plays knight e4 with check. So the king is actually going for a serious walk now into the centre. It looks rather dangerous for black. But after knight b3, we see that alpha 0 actually has everything under control. Just gives the king a safety square with c5. And after rook d3 check, king c6. And the black king is relatively safe. Stockfish just played knight to a5 though. But, and black still has to be a bit careful here. For instance, if king b6, maybe white could get the advantage with knight c4 check. King a6, and white can take this pawn back. After a few trades, they can play bishop d6. Rook a3 check first, king b5, uh, white can play knight to f7, rook e8, and then take the bishop off. And after king f1, a5 and rook g3. This is actually considered slightly better for white here. I mean, I guess in a human game it could be maybe a drawn rook end game. But in the computer games, um, white might have a significant advantage here due to the weak pawn structure of black's position. So after they didn't want to go in for this, so instead of king b6, they played king b5. Allowing white to take the pawn off on b7. But after e4, rook b3 and king a6. It looks a bit bad for black, but they've actually got everything under control. For instance, after c4, there's rook b8, threatening the knight. Knight to a5, uh, with rook threatening to take on b8. So bishop d6 to protect the rook. And after a trade, stockfish plays knight to b3. And here I've highlighted the weakness in black's pawn structure. So to be honest, this position looks absolutely terrible for black. But they do have the bishop as a salvation and also this open B file. As we'll see, alpha zero targets it. To be fair, they're running this through my computer. Stockfish 10 still gives us as equal for both sides. And we'll see why. So first, alpha zero plays rook b4. Obviously, white's going to take this pawn off to protect the c4. King b6, and the point is now basically alpha 0 is going to throw this pawn up and attack white's weak pawns. g3 gives the king a safety square, a5, knight c1, so white's running away. Rook takes the pawn, and it's equal material once again. Rook e2 to try and trade rooks, rook b1, uh, and rook c2. Um, and basically the play continues with both sides just making shuffling moves. So okay, from here... Alpha zero has just pushed the pawn to c6 and c5. They've still got double c pawns, but this a pawn should be enough to save black. They play a3, king e4, king a5, and again, there's a lot of shuffling going on. And it looks as though maybe white should be winning this position and just start launching these pawns up, which um, Stockfish does try to do. But alpha zero just have some neat tricks available. So, okay, g4, starting this pawn progression. h takes g4, h takes g4. And now an important move, bishop b2, which um, 
screens away this a pawn against the rook on the second rank. Stockfish tries to continue with f5, rook takes a2 is played, g5, rook a1, and then knight takes b2. And black's got to be careful, they can't take this knight off because then rook takes b2, which is win for white, and just progress with these two pawns up the board. So after knight takes b2, alpha 0 plays rook a2, pinning the knight, um, and after rook e3, a takes b2, rook b3, king a4, rook b7, king a3, and then the king goes c5. Rook a1, so black's going to get a queen, rook takes g7 is played, alpha 0 throws in rook e1 check first, king d6, and then gets a queen. But of course, actually, after check, king b4, rook b7, king takes c4, takes, takes. We're into a similar position where white may be able to progress these two pawns. If there were further one square further up, uh, this would be a win for white because those two pawns would be unstoppable. However, as it is, black might be in the nick of time after f6, rook f1. So, okay, this stops the pawn progressing to f7. King e6 protects it, but then king d4. So black's got their own chances now to get another queen. g6. So these two white pawns are unstoppable. However, there are a few tricks with rook e1, king f5, a few checks are thrown in. And then finally alpha 0 goes in for the drawn variation with c4, g7, c3, and g8 gets a queen. c2. So now black's one move away from getting another queen. And basically stockfish 8 just now checks black into submission with a draw. So king c4, another check, king c5, check. And basically black's just keeping hold of the c6 pawn and there's no way for white to stop the progression of the c1 queen. So basically white's forced to check and eventually ends in a drawn position with perpetuals. And that's the end of the game. Uh, a good draw for Stockfish 8 and Alpha 0 and uh, a very interesting game with a Berlin opening. So this is just a really good demonstration of how to maybe get a decent position with the Berlin. Obviously we know it's super solid. Multiple moves have been played, but it's interesting to see that out for zero always plays bishop e7 in this position. So certainly have a look at it and see what you think if you can implement it into your games. It's really uh, quite an easy way to play as well with a simple plan of playing bishop e7 and just trying to trade this knight off on f3, then h5, get the bishop out and maybe rook to d8. So yeah, give the uh, Berlin a go. Even though it's considered super boring and super drawish, it's probably worth adding into your arsenal. I'm certainly going to add it into mine. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this quick analysis. Hopefully see you soon and stay safe, everyone. Thanks for watching.